point of view of the criminal expert, London has become a singularly uninteresting city. Well, I hardly think you find many decent citizens to agree with you. Well, 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 one must not be selfish. The community is the gainer and no one the loser, save the poor unfortunate specialist whose occupation was gone. of the Dutch steamship Friesland, which very nearly cost us both our lives. Both of them great success. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes is not at home. If I fail to see him now, it will be too late. But I'm sorry, I cannot help but you. But it is a matter of the utmost urgency. I have already told you, young man, Mr. Mr. Holmes. Holmes. Oh. Well, I must see you. I told the young man you weren't here, but he wouldn't listen. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm nearly out of my mind. I am the unhappy John Hector McFarlane. Now, tell us quietly and slowly who you are and what it is that you want. Uh, you mentioned your name just now as if I should recognise it, but I can assure you beyond the obvious facts that you are a bachelor, a solicitor and a Freemason and an asthmatic. I know nothing about you whatever. Your <clears throat> untidy clothes, sheaf of legal papers, watch chain, and your somewhat irregular breathing. Why, yes, Mr. Holmes. I am all these things. And in addition, I am at this moment the most unfortunate man in London. Have you not read your newspaper? Not yet. Then, if you would allow me. At about 12 o'clock last night, an incident occurred at Lower Norwood which points, it is feared, to a serious crime. A small timber yard caught fire at the back of a house belonging to Mr. Jonas Oldacre, a builder. Surprise was expressed at Mr. Oldacre's absence and it became apparent that he had disappeared. An examination of his room revealed a safe which was open, signs of a murderous struggle, and a heavy walking stick with stains of blood upon the handle. As we... All I ask is that you don't abandon me. A man has followed me from London Bridge Station. If they arrest me before I finished my story, make them give me time, so that I may tell you the whole truth. I could go to jail happy if I knew that you were outside working for me. But arrest you? This is really most gratifying. On what charge do you expect to be arrested? Upon the charge of murdering Mr. Jonas Oldacre of Lower Norwood. Dear me. As we go to press, sensational developments have been reported. Charred remains have been found among the ashes of the fire, and the police theory is that the victim was clubbed to death and the body ignited. It is known that Mr. Oldacre received a visitor last night and the stick has been identified as belonging to that person, a young London solicitor by the name of John Hector McFarlane. May I ask why you are still at liberty, Mr. McFarlane? As there seems to be enough evidence to justify your arrest. I live with my mother at Torrington Lodge in Blackheath, but last night, Having late business with Mr. Oldacre, I stayed at an hotel in Norwood. Mr. Holmes, I knew nothing of this affair until I was on the train to my office this morning and read what you have just heard. I saw at once the terrible danger of my position and hurried to put the case in your hands. Inspector! 
tactless trade. We have been expecting you. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, Mr. John Hector McFarlane. Yes. I arrest you for the willful murder of Mr. Jonas Oldacre of Lower Norwood. Oh, no, but just one moment, Mr. Red. Half an hour more or less could make little difference to you, and this young gentleman was about to give us an account of this very interesting affair, which might aid us in clearing it up. Well, there'd be no difficulty in clearing it up. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Nevertheless, I mean, with your permission, I would be much interested in hearing his account. Well, Mr. Holmes, there's no denying that you have been of use to the force once or twice in the past. But I must insist... All I ask is that you should hear and recognize the absolute truth. I'll give you half an hour. Trade. We must warn you that what you say now will appear in evidence against you. Pray continue. Well, I must first explain that I knew nothing of Mr. Jonas Oldacre, although his name was familiar to me. Many years ago, my parents were acquainted with him, but well, they drifted apart. And so it came as a complete surprise when, yesterday afternoon, at about three o'clock, he walked into my office in the city. Mr. Oldacre, good afternoon. I'm Mr. McFarlane. Ah. Would you care to come through? Please, uh, won't you sit down? How can I help you? This is a draft of my will. I want you, Mr. McFarlane,